A heading is text that describes a section of content. In HTML, we have six different levels of heading elements, from H1 to H6, and we use these elements to create a hierarchical outline to structure our content. It's important to always refer to these elements as headings. Don't confuse it with the term header. In HTML, a header element is a landmark region that semantically groups introductory content, including the top navigation, search, or the settings of a website. Also, don't confuse headings with titles. In HTML, the title element provides meta information about the page, and this is used in the browser's tab, and it also appears in search results. Unrelated to the title element is the title attribute, which isn't very accessible and I recommend you avoid. But it's important to not confuse the term heading with header or title. Here's the home page of my personal website, and let's boot up NVDA, which is a screen reader on Windows, so we can demonstrate how headings are useful. David Lure, accessible web design and development. Link skip to main content. With NVDA running, we can pull up a list of all headings using insert and F7. Elements list dialog. Type, grouping. Link. So let's go over to the headings tab. Headings radio button checked alt plus H. And tab into the headings list. Tree view. David Lure expanded one of one level zero. Here we have the top level heading, which is my name. Level one recent posts expanded one of seven. Next, we have a heading level two, which is recent posts. So we can collapse this and move on to other heading level twos if we want. Collapsed. Availability two of seven level. And we can keep moving through the tree as needed. Current clients expanded three of seven level one. Level two tasseled one of one. And this allows us to traverse our content based on heading level. If we interact with one of these, we'll jump to that content on the page. Dave, main landmark current clients region tasseled heading level three. Exit NVDA die. Okay. In HTML, we have H1 through H6 elements, which give us the six heading levels at our disposal. Although we have six levels available, I recommend limiting our content to about three or four levels at most, and this avoids writing overly complex content. If you find yourself reaching for heading level five or six, you should consider breaking the content into separate pages instead. With these six heading levels, we'll see the default browser styles change the font size based on the level. So we have heading level one, which is quite large, and heading level six, which is pretty small. A common issue I encounter with headings is using heading levels to achieve styling instead of semantics. So you might see somebody reaching for a heading level six to create small text or heading level one to create larger text. And this can be quite confusing, especially for assistive technology users, because it messes up the semantic structure and the hierarchy of the page. So don't use headings for visual styling and always stick with a sensible document outline. Another rule is to only use a single heading level one per page and to make sure that this heading is unique across the website. So for example, on my personal website, the home page has a heading level one that includes my name. And the blog page has a heading level one that includes the word blog. So there's only a single heading level one per page and these are unique across the site. When researching heading levels, you may come across something called the headings outline algorithm. This is something that was introduced in HTML5 that has since been retired and it's become somewhat of a myth. The headings outline algorithm was this overly ambitious feature of HTML5 that was intended to allow us to use heading level ones in nested sections of a page and for heading levels to almost be automatically converted to their appropriate level. So if we look at this demo page, these are actually all heading level ones in the code and the browser default styles are scaling the typography to reflect different heading levels. If we inspect the code on this page, this is achieved by nesting semantic landmark regions and using a heading level one in each of those nested sections. While this seems convenient, the headings outline algorithm was actually never implemented in any assistive technology, so this can completely ruin the user experience and doesn't convey any proper semantics. To prove this, let's boot up NVDA and use the elements list again. With the headings list, we'll find a completely flat hierarchy that's made entirely of heading level ones. Tree view. Level zero heading level one. Heading level one. Heading level one. Heading level. And you can tell that these are all the same heading level, which is really confusing. Exit NVDA dialog. H so instead of using heading level ones, it's critical to always use the appropriate heading level to communicate the right semantics. So in this corrected version, we have H1, H2, H3, and so on as we go down the document structure. Another critical thing to keep in mind is that we should never skip heading levels. So if we have an H4 on the page, it should be preceded by an H3. It wouldn't make sense to jump to something like an H6 if the previous heading is not an H5, but it's okay to go back up the heading levels to establish a new section at a higher level. 
For example, this heading level 3 is establishing a new section that's a sibling of the other heading level 3. And we can see this structure reflected in the code, where we have two sections that are siblings, and both of those include heading level 3s as the first heading. While we're on this topic, let's also explore the relationship between headings and landmark sections. In the HTML spec, sectioning content are elements like header, footer, article, aside, nav, and section. And these establish landmarks or important regions of the page that have separate semantics. When using landmarks and headings together, we can make use of the aria labeled by attribute to associate the landmark with the heading. If we inspect this demo, we'll see that we have multiple section elements. And in order to differentiate the sections, we're making use of the aria labeled by attribute that points to the ID of the associated heading. And if we pull up the elements list in NVDA to get a list of all the landmarks on the page, they'll now have accessible names. So let's move over to the landmarks tab. Head, form fields, ra buttons, radio button, landmarks, radio button, check. And we have a similar tree structure that now communicates the sections. Tree view, level zero main expanded one of one. We have our main landmark, which contains our heading level one, and the following section elements are going to inherit the headings that are associated with them. Level one heading level two expanded one of one. Level two heading level three expanded one of two. Level three heading level four expanded one of one. And this gives unique names to each of our sections. Exit and okay. Another gotcha when working with headings is the H group element. This was also introduced with HTML5, and the thought was that you could associate paragraphs with a heading using an H group to wrap them that would add supplemental information such as a subheading. So in this MDN demo here, we have an H group that wraps an H1 and a paragraph. This seems useful, but again, it was never really implemented by any assistive technology. So there's not really any value in including this element in our markup. When we're working on a new project, it's best to approach headings with an accessibility first mindset. And this means documenting the heading levels right from the start. Using my personal website as an example, it's easy to document heading levels if you draft your content in Markdown where each of the pound signs indicates the heading level. Or if you're working in Google Docs, you can use the provided text styles to separate each of the heading levels. Here we'll see that this content doc uses the title text style, and we can add a subtitle as well. This allows us to reserve the heading styles for each of the corresponding headings per page. So we have our heading one, heading two, heading three, and so forth. And even with these heading styles, I like to still provide that pound sign notation to make it really clear what heading level we're trying to achieve. So if you're developing content, it's best to indicate heading level up front and implement it with raw HTML before you introduce any design in your project. Now that we've covered how to use headings properly, let's dig into some common design patterns where I often find people have used headings incorrectly. Now originally I crafted some demos to demonstrate this, but then I thought maybe we could find some examples in the wild. The very first website I thought to check was stripe.com. Here on the homepage, this is a very common design pattern where we have eyebrow text followed by a larger text that's more narrative. If we inspect the code of this section, we'll find that we're using an H2 followed by an H1. So not only does an H1 not make sense in this context because there should only be one of them at the top of the page, but we have a lower level heading followed by a higher level heading, even though they're relating to the same content. What we should expect to find instead is an H2 for this more descriptive text of modular solutions, followed by a paragraph for this narrative text. There's no need for this to be a heading because it belongs to this section here. And this is a common example of incorrectly using heading levels to achieve different type sizes or just being confused about what the semantics are. At the very top of the Stripe homepage, we find another common pitfall. Again, we have this narrative marketing text of financial infrastructure for the internet. Really, the main heading of this page should be Stripe because this is the home page of the entire brand and service. If we inspect this marketing content here, we'll find that it's within a div and there's a hidden H1 above this, which contains the same text content. So instead of making this a heading one, I might consider making it a heading two or even a paragraph. And instead, I would include a hidden heading level one that has the word Stripe in it. While we're looking at the home page, another common issue I find is that the homepage link in the top navigation is a heading level one. And inspecting this, we do find that exact issue. This doesn't really make sense because on any other page of the site, the main idea is not Stripe itself, but the topic of that page. So by making the home link in H1, 
we've incorrectly labeled every page across our site as being the main or home page. Again, this is kind of overusing a heading, and I would recommend simply deleting this H1 and just making it a link. And if we want to better evaluate our headings across a whole page, we can use a couple different tools. The first would be to pull up a screen reader. We'll use NVDA again. If you're on macOS, you can use VoiceOver. And on mobile, you can either use VoiceOver on iOS or TalkBack on Android. Let's pull up NVDA one more time. And again, I'm going to use the elements list, which is activated with insert F7. We'll navigate up to the tabs with shift tab. Type, grouping, links, radio button, checked all, plus K. And use the right arrow to go over to headings. Headings, radio button, checked all, plus H. If we analyze this tree structure of the headings, we'll notice that there are a ton of H1s and there's not much structure or hierarchy to this page. So this creates a really confusing user experience. Tree view, stripe.com, one of 56, level zero. So we have stripe.com as the heading level one. Financial infrastructure for the internet. Exp then we have that marketing copy as heading level one. Level one modular solutions, one of one. Level zero, a fully integrated suite of financial and payments. Then we encounter another heading level one. Accept and optimize payments. Some more heading level ones. Capture recurring revenue, six of 50. See also seven of 56 level. Set up multi-party payment. See also. And so forth. So you can tell that this isn't a very intuitive user experience, and there's not really any structure to this content. Another tool I like using for accessibility in general, but especially for heading levels, is Wave, which is a browser extension that's made by the team at WebAIM. So on the Stripe homepage, if we activate the Wave extension, we can use the Structure tab, and this will indicate heading levels directly on the page where they're located, as well as providing a nice tree structure. Again, you can tell that there are many H1s on this page, and they don't really make sense in how they're used. In fact, we even have see also links or the equivalent of read more links that are H1s that are directly following other H1s that are basically just marketing copy for specific sections. And there's no real rhyme or reason to how these headings are used. Again, we have H2s followed by H1s, tons of H1s that are just statistics within a section that has an H2, and we're missing that hierarchical information. Again, what I'd expect to find in some of these feature sections would be an H2 for the main idea, in this case, global scale, paragraph text instead of a heading level one for this marketing headline, and maybe H3s for some of these statistics that are call outs for some further detailed information. As we continue scrolling, we'll find that these issues are pretty persistent across the website. So using a screen reader in combination with a tool like Wave will help you catch any issues we have with our document outline, and we can correct those heading levels to make a lot more sense for all users. So as a final summary, let's not confuse the word heading with terms like header or title, and let's make sure that our headings have clear, concise, and descriptive text. We should only include a single H1 per page, and it should be unique to that page across the whole website. We should use heading levels to create a logical heading outline for our document. And we should plan them early on and test throughout our project to make sure that it creates a sensible outline and structure for our content. We shouldn't skip heading levels, and we should make our content less complex so we don't have to reach for all six heading levels often. And lastly, we shouldn't use headings to achieve visual styling and make sure that the structure of our content makes sense for everyone.